guys, super excited to have Rydell from Asiac in the house today. Um, man, you're, you came from Washington, I came from Arizona. We're, we're, uh, we're super excited to announce we're launching the, the, uh, the, the, the backcountry light tripod together from Asiac. Um, really excited about this. So for the guys that don't know, um, Asiac builds um, some really good lightweight accessories. We have a handle uh, that's made of carbon fiber that replaces the, the handle for a Suray VA5. Uh, there's a Garmin Enrich uh, fast clip. Um, there's bino adapters, that uh, ring adapters that will allow you to mount different binos to your tripod. So this is super exciting to, to also have, uh, you know, uh, introducing a, a, a tripod today and at that, a lightweight tripod. And uh, I just, you know, if you want to tell us about it and, um, and you know, go through the, you know, the, the pros and cons of, of you and I talking about lightweight versus heavy. And, yeah, absolutely. And so you, you definitely have uh, your, your likes, um, you know, carved out for this and, and I want to hear it all about it. Yeah, yeah and I, I think just to even start is going to like the philosophy of use for a tripod of like what it's going to be for. There's no one tripod that's going to fit every single yeah. role that you're going to have. You're compromising no matter so, what, exactly. really is what it comes down so, to. I mean, it comes down to, you know, weight, durability, the function that it's going to have and what you're going to use it for. So you're going to have your super heavy truck tripod that you're going to use on your day hunts or just coming out of your truck. It can be five pounds, no big deal. It doesn't need to be packable. Correct. But the goal here of the backcountry light tripod and ball head is to make all the functions and features that you need when you're backpack hunting while trimming all the unnecessary weight out of it. So you can get down to the most minimalist package, still get the stability you need, primarily for kind of three things that I designed it around is, uh, one, glassing with your binos yep. off of a tripod, yep. 10 by 42s, 12 by 42s, you know, we're not talking big 15s or big eye sets. Um, using a smaller medium-sized spotting scope, you know, like a Suaro 65, maybe, you know, like a Koa 77 yeah, would be the, on the, the higher new, end. The new STC would work perfectly yep. with it. Absolutely, gotcha. STC, Koa 553, you know, right. those type of size spotting scopes. Um, and then lastly, shooting lightweight rifles off of, you know, you're not going to put some big 12 pound comp gun on this small tripod. I mean, you could, but that's not what it's designed for, you know, for shooting lightweight mountain um, rifles off of. So that's kind of the philosophy behind the tripod is cutting out all that weight, but getting that functionality out of it. So. Nice. It, I mean, at, at first glance, when, you know, uh, Brady and some of the guys, we were looking at it, um, high quality, well made, well thought out. Um, it appeared that everything, you know, worked exactly like, you know, if we were designing it ourselves, that, I mean, it, it was like somebody put a lot of thought behind it. So, you know, Thank this you, yeah. is an awesome piece of gear. And uh, if you would, why don't you break down kind of, yeah. you know, if you want to go top, bottom, bottom, top, whichever works for you. Absolutely. But uh, tell us about it. Yep. So I'll kind of, and just so you guys know, these are going to be available separately. So you can buy just the legs, you can buy just the head. So I'll kind of run through those two separately, but obviously as a kit, it works really well together. So um, starting from bottom up on the tripod, uh, right on the bottom with the rubber feet, we went with a really oversized rubber foot um, for the size of the tripod leg. That's because a lot of areas that I hunt are in tundra or moss, kind of soft areas. And I've had other tripods with small leg sections punch through. That's something I didn't want to happen. So it's kind of an oversized rubber foot. It also gives protection. Um, so you're not laying on the carbon when you've got it all splayed out. So it's kind of oversized there. Um, kind of moving up, it's a three leg section design. So again, going back to like, what you sacrifice for packability. When you go to a four and five section tripod, right. you've got four joints you know, on a five section tripod. So you've got two more weak points than what this exactly. one has, and you're gonna get a bunch of flex. So you know, obviously the ideal would be to have zero joints, but that's not gonna be packable. So we kind of took a compromise there, and we think a three section design is, gives you that best um, packability while still getting the rigidity with the legs. Um, really easy quarter turn locks. Um, that's pretty standard I just wanna stuff. make a point that if people will watch what what, what Rydell just did right there is a lot of times with twist locks, people will say, oh, I can't do that. I can't, you know, deploy them fast enough. And, and what I would tell you is, is that the more that you use them, the more that you, you practice with them, the faster you can do that. And you can do them quiet or loud. You can do oh, it yeah, as fast yeah. and as, however you want to do that. But, you know, the twist locks I like because number one, they're, they're, they're preventative maintenance. And what I mean by that is, is that they're, they're either closed or they're open. Yep. And if you close them, dust doesn't get in them and rocks and all the little stuff. And so I think it's always a good reminder in the field, you know, like, you know, they're, they're either open or closed. They shouldn't just be, you yep. know, out doing, you know, just open yeah. for no reason. So when I'm folding um, up, I always, yep. all so of them I, I always think of that as preventative maintenance. And um, so I prefer the, the, the twist locks. But sure. um, so what about the they carbon? Well. Yep. So the carbon. So. Um, what some companies do to uh, kind of cut costs, but it adds to weight of tripods, is do like six layers of fiberglass and then wrap that in two layers of carbon fiber on the top. 
Um, since we were trying to go for the lightest design, even though it costs a little more, uh, it's full carbon fiber, eight layers all the way through, um, kind of in your standard 3K carbon fiber pattern. <clears throat> so that's kind of moving up the legs. One thing we did as well um, that we've seen on a couple other designs that we borrowed from is a lot of people will just epoxy legs into the tripod. Um, but what we did also is added threads inside these attachment points. Yep, so it's both threaded and epoxied in place. Perfect. So that just gives you the most rigid connection for your tripod leg into the main body. Kind of moving up from there. Um, well, and really what that does too is, you know, heat, you know, temperature changes. Yeah. It, it, it takes that possibility that, you know, for some reason, if you have a bad, you know, yep. uh, adhesive that, that just doesn't yeah. do it. It, it, it adds another element of, of yeah. uh, security to that. Because just so epoxy alone yeah. is actually kind of brittle, so having those threads 100%. in there gives you um, a lot more longevity for the yep. tripod as well. I, awesome. Yep. Kind of moving up into the leg locks, wanted something that was really simple on a lightweight tripod, you know, one finger adjustment. Um, totally fine on your big heavy tripods to have one that you pop out with two fingers, those are really rigid locks, but on a lightweight tripod, you know, plenty strong, having them with just that nice easy one finger adjustment. And then obviously again, very standard, they snap back into place, got three different leg angles. Um, so when you're running a, um, a short center column, you can splay this thing way out and get it down just three inches off the ground when it's fully locked out. Yeah, one of the things I did when you, you, know, you first sent it to me um, is I put a heavy glove on and they, they work just as easily with a heavy glove as they yep. do just you know, with a lightweight or you know, your hands. Yeah, so, tried, tried to make all the knobs size so that you know, when you are wearing gloves that everything's pretty easy to do. Um, so kind of moving from there, the next logical place is probably talking about the center column. So um, yep. I'm a huge fan of a no center column tripod. I like that because I can get it so low to the ground. So for shooting a rifle prone, or a lot of times, you know, we've talked about this before, I use my spotting scope as much as I can laying prone on the ground. If it's windy at all, even five miles an hour, I like to run um, the spotting scope prone to stay out of the wind. Um, so we have both a, basically a no center column option, a short center column, and then a 10 inch adjustment center column. Those are really easy to swap between. You just got to um, pop out this, uh, oh, I missed this feature too. It's got a um, spring-loaded hook. No big surprise there, pretty standard on most tripods, but allows you to add weight, which is really important on a lightweight tripod yeah, too. Yeah, some guys, you know, like, um, I know some guys, you know, use their grab handle on their pack. Yep. And we'll hook it up on there yep. and let the pack do that. I love throwing an algae on um, there. Some guys will take a little ditty bag and fill it with, you know, a couple rocks yep. or, you know. Um, I also know a couple guys that will take a loop uh, or a cord of paracord, and when they're glassing, they'll run it underneath their foot and they'll pull yeah. down as they and, and, and Those puts are all that weight. So that there's, there's all different. There's all kinds of different ways to oh, do yeah. that, but that's the the fact that you added the hook. That's yep. that's spot on. Um, so then short center column here. It's um, just a single piece design. So you can pop that out. You can switch to your long center column. You know, this probably isn't something you're going to do in the field. You could absolutely, if you wanted to, do it in the field um, and bring both center columns. But this just gives you the option. Um, yeah, I, mean, run both I, I think the, the thing that that does, you know, obviously for the weight conscious person, it takes some weight off of there. I think more importantly, what it does is, is for somebody like you, you know, sheep hunting, and we, you know, we, we were discussing, you know, um, getting low to the ground and yep. staying, you know, keeping that profile down, yep. um, that, that certainly allows you to do that. But it also allows you to take that tripod down to, you know, its lowest in case you're going to shoot off of exactly. it. Exactly. So really, it kind of eliminates the, the need for in some cases, a bipod, yep. which I'm not trying yeah. to offend the bipod guys, but no, no, it's, some it's sometimes another tool that you can have. Yeah, though. another tool. Yeah, it, it's just yep. it, it's about what system works for you at what given time that you're going to need yep. it, and I think that that's that, yeah, that gives I mean, you another option for with sure. With that short center column, I mean, you effectively have a bipod there, you know, with that extra yep. leg that you can splay out a different direction. So. Um, yeah, that is no, something that I awesome. absolutely do on a lot of my hunts. Is I yeah. shoot off the tripod whenever I, I can. So. I try to keep my, um, you know, my center post, you know, obviously down as far as I can. Yeah. Um, but you know, generally speaking, if I if I have to make you know just little adjustments, I do. But um, I think that's an awesome you know option that you added there. That's perfect. A um, couple other features on the center column. I'm sure as you guys can see, it's a triangular design. Um, so this thing just folds up super tight and compact. Just yeah, and that's that what I was talking about. Space. That yeah, that pack space, that footprint. You know, some you know, there's tripods that that might be lightweight, but they would be double the circumference right yeah. there. And boy, does that really add profile to your pack? And, nice. and, yep. and I keep talking about that footprint, so it can um, slide I think into that's just about, yeah, just about absolutely. any pocket. So, um, yeah. Otherwise, on the center column as well, um, again, pretty standard stuff. It's small set screw on both the long and short center column so you can lock your, your head in place, whether it's uh, the back country light ball head or another head, just so it doesn't um, 
you know, spin off when you're using that panning function. Or yeah, and you're, you're using three eighths. Yep. So yeah, awesome. A lot. Sometimes you know people are throwing the quarter inch to three eighths adapters on here just to save weight, simplicity, no moving parts. We just went straight three eighths. It's ninety nine percent of tripod heads. I, I, so. I would tell you that ninety nine point nine percent of yep. tripods are three eighths. So we just went straight yeah. three eighths. It's no always adapter. the guys doing the quarter, you know, threads that that cause quote unquote that issue. Yep. But and quarter is um, great for stuff, you know, so like bino adapters. From a guy who stuff. sells tripods, thank you for using <laughs> three eighths. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, just three eighths on so. um, both the long and short center column. Um, Moving up, kind of last feature on the tripod, we just put an oversized locking knob on that center column so that, you know, a lot of times I find with my binos, I'm glassing, like resting my hands on it, you know, like putting way more weight than I probably should on my tripod, but it gives me that stability. And I wanted to really be able to lock in that center column and not yeah. be able to compress it. So oversized knob there, again, and also easy. Brady to and I were talking on, about so. yesterday, like, I, I, like, like if I were gonna do that, like I might like let my hands sit right there. Sure. Yep. And then, um, Yes, I mean, it, it just, again, it's a comfort thing. If you're right or left-handed and depending on how you do it, like mm -hmm. I've always kind of let one of my hands sit up there and wait down the tripod at that point. Yep. So yep. Um, yeah, no, thank you for that. Yep. That's just awesome. another little feature that we tried to bake into it that um, was something that we knew we would enjoy in the field, so. Okay. Tell us about the, the ball head. Um, yeah, so ball head. So here starts the debate of pan head versus ball head. Um, I know you're a pan head fan. I'm a ball head fan. Yep. Um, I like the versatility that it gives. Um, so all that aside, again, you can get both these separate. You don't have to get these as a kit. If you don't like ball heads, that's totally fine. You know, you can run pan heads on this. Well, again, it's it's about what you're trying to use at that specific time. Yep. And if you were sitting somewhere where weight wasn't a factor, yep. And you're glassing for huge long periods of time, and you're you know really slowing down and yeah, studying I'll bring that train. Yeah, VA5 head. There, there, there's yeah. the there's heads for that purpose too. Totally. So, um, ball heads really it's it, it, it entirely is about you know space and, and weight savings yep and, and it there there I will tell you there's some there's some out there that I just don't like period sure. but I, I really am interested to hear like the thought because um, what people don't realize is that there's a lot of thought that went into this specific one so so break it down for sure. us. sure yeah I mean obviously first thing you see it's kind of a skeletonized design that's for weight savings you know trying to shave as much weight as we can out of that while still getting both a locking ball head and a panning base. So you get both those all in a package that's 4.8 ounces. So it keeps it really lightweight for what you get. And I wanted to go back to on one of the features that I love about ball heads that I think it's missed a lot is when you're setting up your tripod in a hurry or you're in a weird spot and you know, let's say you're set up on a hillside and your tripod's like this, I love that I can still Absolutely. get level. That's like my favorite thing about ball heads and especially for shooting off of. You know, if I'm set up on a weird hillside, I wanna be able to throw that arc rail on the gun straight into the tripod head and know that I can get level, whereas on a pan head, you know, you're gonna be off axis. Yeah. Just a small. Well, on the pan head, you're like always ballhead. you're always beholden to the to the to Wherever the level the yep. of, of the trundle. Yep. So absolutely. So, again, just personal preference there. But yep. Then going into the features on the ball head, um, height's two and a half inches, so real compact. Um, this locking knob, I think, is the my favorite part of the ball head, and what really sets it apart from other ball heads. So instead of having a big knob that you're um, screwing into tension. It's like a quick throw, a little you know, quarter turn to throw. So how I see that is you know, when you're glassing with binos, you're able to get behind it and it's just these real quick adjustments with your thumb um, you know, to tension and untension. And you can kind of dial that in so you can get that, that just right tension. I, I like to use the term feather. Well. Yeah, feather. You're, sure. just, you're just feathering yeah. in the, the tension on it. Absolutely. And that typically gives you that, that smooth transition from one to another. Yep. Yeah, so lightweight compact ball head. Um, of course, Arca Swiss compatible. Um, comes with a quick release plate, and yeah, I mean that's kind of the ball head. Pretty and, simple. Yeah, and, but it's and the the plates are are well thought out. Um, they're um, Arca Swiss, yep. and they're super easy. I love the D ring on the yep, back. The D ring, but yeah, the, but yeah, there's a D ring, but there is also a, a hex head yep. in there. And the amount uh, of times on yeah. hunts, I've taken pieces of shale or sticks and shoved them in the alley to try and tighten it. it. Drives me nuts. So yeah. having a D ring. And there are. Um, um, so. And by the way, there are start and stop of screws. Yep. Um, some guys. Um, Take them out I, I typically take one side out so that the, 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 the it won't slide out in a certain way that I always kind of remember that that's the way it is. Yep. Um, but uh, Rydell, man, you've knocked it out of the park. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to get this, you know, a full year underneath me with this. Um, I've had, uh, you know, some, some mid-size optics on it and been pleasantly surprised with it. And I can't wait to get it in the field yeah. this year. Absolutely, and I'm gonna hit some guys with specs because I'm sure people yeah, have been no, waiting no. on more I, specs. I, I, on I wasn't too, done so. yet, nope, but you're I, good, man. I, I, I really wanted to, so. uh, I wanted to hear about that. So yep. tell us about the um, most common question yep. we get: How high is it? Right. So 
on the tripod alone, I'm not including the ball head, just going to the top of the center column. Um, with the short center column, 35 inches, so that's still going to be able to do all your sitting height stuff. With the center column, you get up to 45 inches, so nice. 10 more inches to it. No, that's perfect. Yep, and then um, minimum height, I think we talked about, but with the short center column, all split out down to three inches. In its compacted form? Yep, so compacted, so just the tripod by itself is 15 and a half inches. Okay. You have that ball head, you hit and then 18 you got the, inches. 18 inches with the, yep, so gotcha, real compact, gotcha. fit in any pack, day packs, you know, whatever. So, right out, uh, what are we talking, you know, total weight of, of the tripod with the, the ball head and, you know, what do they weigh separately? Yep, totally. So, just the tripod, 20.4 ounces, the ball head, 4.8 ounces. Uh, quick, quick release plate adds about an ounce. Yeah. As you're fully set. That's, I mean, math in my head. For you lightweight guys, the, I'm t it, 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 it's, it's just awesome. This yep. is going to be fantastic. And then the way that I'm running it um, is going to be with that short center column and the ball head. So, with the short center column, the tripod's 18.9 ounces. Then you add the ball head on, you're sub one and a half pounds, sub 24 ounces for the entire wow. set. Yeah, and I think that that's, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about shooting from and, you know, like you have to have bigger, heavier tripods for that. And look, we all know that weight and size, that, that, that'll add stability. However, I think when you get in the backfield and you're, you're, you're put in, you know, off camber positions and you're shooting, and, and I like to use the term shooting from or off of a tripod as opposed to I don't always have my my gun just sealed in and locked into it. Sure. There are guys that do that. I typically shoot off a shooting fork. Totally. Um, and so, um, you know, I, 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 I kind of prefer that actually. And th this is going to be a perfect resting place. Yep. And so I'm, I'm super excited about that. Yep. 100%. Great way to shave as much weight as possible. And we tried to not... We tried to give up as little as possible as far as stability, functionality, yeah. being able to do everything that you're going to be carrying a tripod to do. You know, if you go too light, it's not going to do what you need it to do. We're trying to hit that balance, but still shaving a lot of weight. Um, and I think we, uh, I think we got a good one here. At, you know, just under a pound and a half. So, with all of that being said, so our 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 uh, our clientele and our our uh, our members and everybody knows, what are we looking at price-wise? Yeah. So again, they're available separate. So if you've already got a ball head or a, you know, a pan head that you like, you can buy them separate. But tripod, 275, ball head, 75, full kits, 350 bucks, gets you the whole setup. I think it's well worth it. Rydell, thank you for coming in today. It means a lot that you traveled here and, and were able to, to explain all this to us and lay out all the, the details. Um, an incredible amount of thought. Um, just wanted to say thanks. Um, super excited to have this in the shop. Um, the, uh, the, the, the best way to, uh, to get a hold of us is 702-847-8747 um, by phone. You can email me at optics at gohunt.com. Um, please reach out to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Ask questions there. We always answer those questions too. Um, uh, uh, Rydell, how can they get a hold of you if they need to? Yeah, best way is my website, asiacequipment.com or Instagram, same thing, at asiacequipment. Awesome. Thank you very much for coming today. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Well done, sir. Thank you.